Hello friends, this video on diversity in living world part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so with this idea about the taxonomic categories, what are we going to do now? We are going to discuss about each taxonomic category in detail. So we will start with the basic unit that is we will start with the lowermost level that is species. So gradually we will talk about all the seven taxonomic categories and please remember that it is very very important to understand this concept of taxonomy because if you understand this only then you will be able to understand the basics of nomenclature that how do you name organisms so let us see what are species they are the basic unit of classification of organisms as we saw in the previous slide these are group of closely resembling organisms which are capable of reproducing with each other to produce offsprings. An important point to note here is closely resembling organisms. So that means there will be a lot of similarities between organisms belonging to the same species. Now you remember some time back we were talking about binomial nomenclature. Right. So when we talked about binomial nomenclature, we said that it consists of two parts. The first part is the generic name and the second part is the specific epithet. We had also taken example that let us suppose if I, we take Homo sapiens, which is the uh, binomial name for human beings. So Homo represents the genus and sapiens this part represents the species. So basically this homo sapiens, this represent the species to which human beings belong. So we can say that all human beings irrespective of how they look, so like all human beings share a lot of similarities, right? Some might have curly hair, some might have straight hair, some might have black hair, some might have brown eyes. So those differences are there. So that is why it is not told that all organisms belonging to a species will be exactly similar. They will resemble very closely. Now if you look at this, each and every human being, they have the basic structure similar. They have two eyes, one nose, one lip. They have uh, two hands, right? So all those things are similar. So they will have small, small differences in each other and that is why they look different from each other. But all human beings belong to the same species and they are all homo sapiens. So similarly, if we take the example of cats. So if you see, there are so many different varieties of cats which we actually see. Some are very black, some are, some are white, some have stripes on their bodies, some are very small in size, some are quite big and fat. So there are many types of cats which we actually see but they all belong to the same species and that is why even though they look different they are capable of producing offsprings by reproducing amongst themselves. So when we talk about cat they belong to this species called Felis catus. So this represents the specific epithet of cats right. So individuals of one species do not breed or cannot reproduce with other species. For example, a human being and a cat, they cannot reproduce to produce a new organism. They can't do that. Similarly, a cat and a dog, they cannot reproduce. An elephant and a tiger, they cannot reproduce because they all belong to different species. But organisms which belong to the same species, they will be able to mate with each other and produce new organisms. Clear? So these are species. So whenever somebody asks you, how do you know if two organisms belong to the same species or not? So one important thing is the capability to reproduce. Right? So that is something which actually denotes whether two organisms are species or not. So examples of species, human beings, cat, dog, mango, rose, each of them belong to a different species. Okay. So let us now talk about the next level that is genus. So what is a genus? Again, these are group of closely related species. That means now we are comparing two different species. So two different species which are very closely related. Now in the last slide, I gave you examples, right? Cat is a species, dogs are a species, human beings are a species. Tigers are a species. So we have different different species. Now two species, any two species which are 
quite similar to each other they fall under the same genus so those closely related species are known as genus now the plural genus is a singular is the singular form the plural form of genus is genera so this is the plural of genus okay so now when you talk about now if you say what would be the example of a genus now here if you look at the screen you can see dogs so they are they all belong to the same species and the gray wolves they belong to a different species but if you compare the gray wolves with the dogs you see they share a lot of similarities in their looks right in fact we all know from our study on evolution that dogs have originated from gray wolves okay we will not get into that that how they originated but you can see there are uh, there is a lot of similarity between the dogs and the gray wolves so even though they both of them belong to different species but since they still share some similarities therefore we say that they belong to the same genus so when you look at the scientific name for gray wolf it is canis lupus so canis denotes the genus so that means i'm trying to say that if you write the scientific name for dog the genus should be the same so the genus here will also remain canis and for dogs it is familiaris so both of them share the same genus similarly we can take another example okay before that species in any one genus are more closely related to each other than to species in any other genus okay now when i talk about one genus that means as i said just now the dogs and the gray wolves they fall under one genus right so dogs and gray wolves will share more similarities amongst themselves as compared to dogs and lion because lion is a different genus so lion falls into a different genus gray wolf falls into a different genus now dog share the same genus as gray wolves therefore dogs will share more similarities with gray wolves than with lion so that is what is being told here that species which are in the same genus they are more closely related to each other than to species which are in some other genus let us take another example the lion leopard and the tiger so if you see they are all different species right they do not reproduce with each other a lion reproduces with a lioness so they are different species but they share a lot of similarities so if you look at this picture itself you can see that there are a lot of similarities between a tiger a leopard and a lion so because they all fall under the same genus so if you look at the scientific name of a leopard so it is panthera pardus so panthera denotes the genus and pardus denotes the species when you look at the scientific name of um, a tiger it is panthera tigris so again the same genus if you look at the scientific name of a lion it is panthera leo so the same genus again so we can say that organisms i mean the species which are similar to each other so those group of closely related species is a genus let us now look at family so now you have i guess now you have already guessed what a family is so family is above genus that means it is a group of related genera with still lesser number of similarities as compared to genus and species because as we go up the similarities will keep on decreasing like when we were talking about species we were talking about we were comparing two dogs so the similarity between any two dog is more than the similarity between a dog and a gray wolf so dog and gray wolf was a genus so now when we will talk about family we are talking about group of related genera that means the genus which have similarities amongst themselves so let us let us take the same example of lion tiger and leopard so what did we see the three of these belong to different species but they all belong to the same genus that is why they share 
some similarities in their appearance. Now, if you compare them with a cat, have you ever seen that there are some similarities between a cat and a tiger or a leopard? So, there are some cats whose appearance is also very similar to a tiger. So, don't you feel that a cat is nothing but a miniature version of a tiger? So, cats also share some similarities and that is why cats also fall under the same family as these three animals. So, now for cat, what is the family that cat belongs to? So, the family to which all these belongs to is the family Felidae. So, Felidae is the family now, when I talk about a cat, what is the genus for a cat? For a cat, the genus is Felis. What is the genus for um, a leopard? It is Panthera. What is the genus for a tiger? It is Panthera again. And what is the genus for a lion? It is again Panthera. So, this is the family. The family is the same for all of them. The genus is same for these three but different for a cat. Now, what about species? So, for a cat, it is catus. For this leopard, it is pardus. For a tiger, it is tigris. And for a lion, it is leo. So, the species is different for each of them. That means each of them belong to different species. These three belong to the same genus and these four belong to the same family Felidae. So now if you compare this picture, the similarities between two lions is more because they belong to the same species. The similarity between a lion and a tiger is lesser. The similarity between a lion and a cat is still lesser. So as we are going up, the similarities are decreasing. Now the next point says that genera in one family are more closely related to each other than to genera in any other family. That is again very obvious. So here if you look, the fam one family is Felidae. So all the organisms that fall under the family Felidae will have more similarities amongst themselves than with any other family. For example, a cat will share more similarities with a tiger and a leopard than it shares with an elephant or a human being, right? Because they, the human being or the elephant, they all belong to different families. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.